he's doing a thing with a group of other people that are that are uh, all based out of Des Moines themselves. That's pretty good. And uh, yeah, they're based, the out of, perfect. <laughs> they're based out of Des Moines. And um, Scott Sutherland started this thing called Monday Night Live at the XBK, which is a music club in Des Moines. And, um, really great club. And then these guys, uh, which is Scott Sutherland on bass, Dave Ducharme Jones on lead guitar, and then Russ Tomlinson playing drums. And every week, without fail, they bring in a new songwriter, rehearse his music, and then you know prepare themselves, have a single rehearsal, and then do the show. I mean, I'm talking Tuesday, they get wow. the music, and it's like 20, 30 songs, so it's quite a bit of music. Man. They get that on <laughs> Tuesday, and then we gathered on Sunday and did a rehearsal, and then we played Monday night, and they were flawless. And it's really? just, yeah, it's remarkable. And then they turn over and do that again. So Yeah, you have to be talented to be able to do something like yeah, that. Yeah, and those guys are just out of this world. And um, I had a lot of fun with that. And then, um, you know, I have I occasionally have other random people sit in with me. Uh, Matt Woods is a phenomenal guitar player and yes. singer himself. And um, he lends his talents to my stuff from time to time. And just last night I worked with Catherine uh, Severin Fox, right. who's a great, wildly talented violin player too. So. And and these are all Iowans people. Yeah, absolutely. We got a lot of talent in the state. So. <laughs> Don't go to New York and all that stuff. Stay here. That's right. right. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's what I I started this show in 1986, yeah. and the reason I started it is because all these bands would pack up and go to New York or Los Angeles in those days, or Austin, Texas too. Mm. Now everybody's going to Nashville. Sure. But the thing is, you know, you'd hear, you'd see them on TV and they say, from Los Angeles, I go, wait a minute, no, they're not from yeah. Los Angeles. <laughs> you know, it used to bug me. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I started this show. I, For oh, sure. We're, we're Midwest. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, Catherine Severing Fox. Yep. Talented. Yeah, absolutely. Man. Absolutely. I've seen her play with just on video yeah. i've seen her with i don't know several different people all different genres and she's right on target it's like wow absolutely yeah she can do anything she yeah. can do anything with that instrument and she's a great singer too she worked up some harmonies for our show last night as well and she was just flawless all the way through and yeah she's a talent for yeah, sure for sure man that's great i think when you when you can Network, I guess, would be the the word. Mm. Ne network with other musicians around and come up with fantastic stuff like that. Absolutely, I mean, yeah, like, absolutely. And that's there's you know there's a handful of great players at just about every instrument in in Des Moines specifically even and um, you know but it's they're all they're all in so many different versions of bands and you know collections. Right. And so it's hard to. It's hard to be able to build a band with what we've got there because everybody's so busy. Dave Ducharme Jones, mm -hmm. him and his wife played together. Right? Yeah, he and Annie play together as a duo, and then they also have a, they do small shows as duo, and then they have a yeah four piece that all together. Okay, some yeah, I know. Stuff too. I know they've sent me stuff. I, I don't. I I played some of their stuff. I sure. You know, the thing is, I get piles of. Stuff. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> and my wife bugs me. She says, "I see the way this station is set up. Everything is on computer, so I have to record. My, they won't let me put my music on their computers. They say, no, no, we don't want them mixed up and everything. Yeah. So I have to record the show at home and then bring in a flash drive and play it off the computers. So oh yeah, yeah." Like, so everybody will call and request something. I, I, well, I, I can't play it this week, but maybe next week. Sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> but yeah, it's crazy because people don't seem to understand, you know, that why can't you play it now? Or, right. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. Yep. I can't. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be that technology advancements kind of help, you know, making things a little more streamlined. Well, I'm I am very savvy with technology. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any of my listeners are just laughing right now. They're, they're rolling <laughs> their eyes. Yeah, are you savvy, all right. <laughs> oh well, welcome. This is your first time in Clinton, or 
It is, yeah. First time in Clinton, I just finished a show up at the Wide River Winery. The folks out there were great. We sat out on the deck, and it was a little chilly, but we had a nice view of the Mississippi River and played a straight hour or straight two hour show, and it was a good nice. time. Yeah, well, that's good. I'm glad it went well for you. How about last night? Yeah, last night was remarkable. I was at Makokata uh, Codfish Hollow. Um, it's been a venue I've wanted to play at for as long as I've been playing, and uh, yeah, it was just unreal. Tiff and her team there are just doing really great things, and yes, they you know, are. We, sure. Catherine and I opened up the night, and Jeremy Pinnell and his band were on fire for the whole second set, and then Miles Nielsen and the rest of Hearts closed it out, and they're <laughs> top of the line too. So, really great night of music, and three very different acts, but I think that made it more of an interesting yeah. show. See, that's that's one thing I like about Codfish Hollow. Is they don't necessarily say, well, this is a blues band, and we got to have another blues, you know, For sure. and another blues, or this is country, we have to have all country. Yeah, they mix it up, and that's that's the way I listen to music. For sure. Know? I mean, yep. I think most people probably yeah. do shuffle that playlist. So, yeah. Wow, I got somebody. I think I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's about time. <laughs> okay, Mallory, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Mallory wants music. Oh, sure, sure. She doesn't like when we tired of tired of listening to us talk. Huh? <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Come on, Mallory. Anyway, what do you, you got a song? Or what do you want to play? Yeah, I'll start with a song. It's called Summer Thunder, and it was uh, I wrote this after the derecho in 2020. You know, if that year was, if that year wasn't oh, bad enough, we had to have an inland hurricane <laughs> cut right to the center of the state, too. And um, that sort of inspired this song called Summer Thunder. All right, J. Jeffrey Messerl, live in the KMCN studio on Midwest Review, live. Either end fall on a freight blue tar where it covers a hole in the roof the big limb come down in the middle of the night short it scared the life out of you now it's like we will brace for another storm Our insurance kicks in and Every hair on the back of your neck stands up With any bit of moisture in the wind Just take a deep breath, don't let your fear Drag you under let them drag you under Cause nothing puts me at ease Like summer thunder Like summer thunder Cicadas call out from their sacred grave Late for seventeen years, and it's a sure sign of an oppressive heat when they all but deafen our ear. They'll descend with the sound of some Bible's play, enough to leave you shaking in your boots. But I promise they don't mean any harm Unless you're made out of tree, limb, and root Just take a deep breath, don't let your fear Drag you under Let them drag you under Nothing puts me at ease Like summer thunder Like summer 
summer thunder. The folks next door at it once more. It's time for their daily cussing match. Just screaming and slamming that old screen door. Long since busted its latch Now what's mine is mine And their trouble's there Long as they stay on their side of the fence Soon they'll run out of cigarettes or steam Lose the buzz of that Milwaukee's bed Take a deep breath, don't let your fear drag you under, let it drag you under, there's nothing puts me at ease, like summer thunder, like summer thunder. Nothing puts me at ease like summer thunder. Oh, yeah. That's good stuff, people. That's good stuff. Man, I like that. Thank you. You, Thank you know, you. that reminds me of, of that doggone storm. It's, yeah. I, after it was over... I went to go out my front door, and I couldn't get out the front door, so I went to the back door, no. couldn't get out the back door. I thought, oh, no. What the heck? And we don't have trees in our yard. Sure. But, it's like, but we did then. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, man, yeah. that, that was quite an experience. It really was crazy, yeah. But the thing I liked best about it is that the whole neighborhood came out, and they were helping everybody. For sure. And everybody, you know, it's like some of these people... I don't even know their name. You, I've lived yeah. in my house for 30 years. And there's other people that have lived there five, six years, you know, and I didn't know their names. and I, But I learned them that day. For sure, and yeah. So that was one good thing that came out of that storm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's good stuff. There. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, now, to me, the, the different lines of... Of different genres, mm -hmm. the lines have become so blurry. Yeah. So, I know what I call. I call almost everything when I call it Americana. Yeah. What do you call your music? I mean, that's basically what I stick with too. I yeah. mean, there's no. It's it's kind of a weird umbrella term. I know, and because um, it sort of you know sometimes you're you're calling a country band an Americana band, and you're kind of eliminating some of those traditional styles if you just use an overarching right, right. title for it. But um, I think for a lot of songwriters probably it's 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 applicable because there's you know there's elements of folk in some songs, there's some country, some blues, things like that. So yeah. it's sort of all over the map and I, I think the the one really good thing about being solo is that I can just write whatever comes to me and I don't have to fit a particular format. It's just anything I can write, I write and you know, if it sounds a little bit more folky than the last one, it's not a big deal. Right. You can go That's write a good anything point. I want, so it makes yeah. it nice. But yeah, Americana is basically what I would call it, too. You know, to me, it seems like we're kind of returning to the way back beginning. Because blues and country, and they all kind of messed together mm -hmm. at one point years and years ago you know absolutely and then i think it was the music business the record labels and such that started putting it in this category or this category, sure you know yeah but i you know to me it's always been good music is good music no for matter sure what yeah you call absolutely it. absolutely so uh, you said uh, about you were talking about writing. Do you write alone, or do you? Um, I've written basically everything alone. Um, yeah, I haven't. I've had a, a song called "Rumble Strips" was a co-write I did with my friend Chad Elliott, and um, he. Chad. 
Yeah, he's you know he's incredible, <laughs> and he won't take much credit for it, but um, he was the inspiration behind it and helped kind of you know guide me through so I could get some things put together, and uh, so I did that with him. And my wife hears everything that I write before I play it out, and sometimes you know she's got ideas because she's a uh, she's brilliant and she's a great writer cool. on her on her own too. So um, she can you know lend me some knowledge from time to time too, but. Um, I don't. I, then I don't end up giving her any credit for her help. But is, <laughs> she is your wife a songwriter? Or? No, she's uh, she's a poet, and she's uh, written, she? yeah, she's written a few novels too that oh, she's nice. working on trying to get published. So um, she's yeah, super creative. She's a scientist, but she writes for fun. Now, now I kind of understand. You know, after look, I've listened to I don't know how many of your songs, a bunch of them. Yeah, and I always thought not only do they tell a story but they're some cases they're kind of novel like yeah does that come from your wife or i think that's just kind of what i've been doing since i started writing um yeah. you know i think traditional country is very long story short so there's a lot of detail it's telling a long story but in a truncated amount of time and yeah, i think true. when i started writing i was more in that traditional country western vein and so there was a lot of ballads and things like that. And so, hey, you know, most of the time it's just telling stories. And so you got to, you know, loosen up the word economy and uh, put it, get as much information as you can in that short chunk of time without making it, you know, nobody wants to listen to a seven minute long song. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you got to keep it kind of short, but uh, got to get all that information in there too. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, yeah. You know, how do you know when a song is done? You know, it's just a feeling. There's just a yeah. feeling. Um, and, you, you know, even after they've been recorded, I'll make changes to things if I'm playing them and it feels like something else should have been said or it should be delivered different yeah. or something like that. But really, it's just, um, there's a pretty traditional format as to how a song should be, you know, established. And I feel like if I meet those parameters and I'm satisfied with the lyrics that I've got in there and the vocal melody sounds nice, then I'm pretty much locked and loaded and let it roll. And, yeah, there's no real way to tell. It's just a feeling. Right. Yeah. Well, I understand. I dabble in short stories. I'm Great. no not a professional writer by any means. Sure. But I like to write stories about stuff that happened in my childhood. Yeah. And I never know the story's done because I'm always making little changes here. Because I'll remember something. Oh, now yeah, I yeah. remember how it went. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's I also write. So it's the some, same in music. Then? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. And I also write. They're trying to write some either novels, novels, hopefully or novellas. That are you? Um, yeah, and that's a, that is a tricky thing because it's hard to tell when it's done, and you know sometimes that makes it a little more difficult. So I've got a bunch of those hanging out there that don't get as much attention as they probably should because I'm constantly working on music. But your wife is a scientist. What? Yeah, what, she, uh, uh, she's an archaeologist for the federal government. Oh, yeah, really? that's that's what brought us to Des Moines. We did. Wow. We moved here for her work. She um, was offered that position, and it was a major step up for her career. And so we, we're in Des Moines now. And I think that is a fascinating field myself. I yeah, mean, I just wow. Yeah, Everything it's remarkable. Everything I read about archaeology, I go, oh wow. Yeah, I mean, I'd so never, cool. I'd never met an archaeologist once in my life, and now I'm married to one. You know, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty wild. But there's a lot of them out there, and they're doing really important work. It's, it's super interesting too. And yeah. Yeah. She works for the NRCS with the federal government, and yeah. Wow, that's cool. For yeah. sure. And she writes too. Yeah, she, she writes. Said, writes poetry, and yeah, has written some novels as well. Yeah, she's very talented. Wow. She She can paint too. And she, has she? written a poetry book or she self-published a book of her poems um yeah it's called a mouthful of agates um she has a website too i think that um you can get it ordered at but yeah she did a poetry book as well oh yeah that's cool yeah I, she's very good oh by the way i want to sorry i didn't mean to interrupt not at all but uh i wanted to say congratulations for being the may artist of the month for oh, iowa public yeah. radio thank you very much yeah. i appreciate that yeah, yeah, that's that kind of cool. That was a nice, yeah, nice thing. That was, I signed up for it on, uh, you know, off their website and just crossed my fingers. And sure enough, they reached out and we got yeah. to put something together on Tuesday and things should start rolling out. You know, and it was a codfish hollow all day yesterday and there's no cell reception out there in the hills. And, <laughs> and uh, so I, I'm not sure. And I still haven't had the time to check, but I think some of that information should start rolling out this weekend. And 
start seeing some things pop up if you're following Iowa Public Radio on yeah, any yeah. of the social media stuff. Yeah, that the one song, the video that I saw. Um, sure. I think it was Henrietta Queen of the Highlands. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Good stuff. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'll play that one today, too. By the way, I, I said good stuff, Mallory. <laughs> There's I, an unwritten rule. I, good stuff. I had a call, and they say, you know, you say good stuff a lot. And I said, oh, well, sorry. And she said, no, no, no. That's okay. We've made a game out of it. <laughs> when you say good stuff, we take a drink. I that's go, great. Okay. That's great. <laughs> so when I don't say it enough, yeah. they're like, hey, come on. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good stuff. <laughs> there you go. See, Jay is helping you out too. Jordan, I should say, is helping yeah, that's you out too. Either of them fine. JJ, you ever keep called JJ? You know, not really. You no. know, I feel like I recall a time when I was younger that I tried to make that happen. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. But nobody ever, nobody ever got. Nobody it, caught really. the yeah. message. Yeah, yeah. Hey, come on. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. So, uh, you want to get another song in? Or? Yeah, well, since we were talking about Henrietta, Queen oh, of the Highway, I'll just go ahead and play that song. Great. Jay Jeffrey Messerol, live in the KMCN studio on Midwest Review Live. home when you were barely 16 years of age, crashing on couches and taking up floor space, but you promised yourself you'd never go back home again. Cause when he wasn't stoned, your dad was drunk and mean, you had the kind of mother looking under rugs to sweet, so it was easier to run. And to sit and face the pain Henrietta Queen of the Highway You turned 21 Inside a bottle of cheap gin Traded it for Lucy And a little bit of sin Well it's easier to compromise yourself when you really need a drink Another line between right and wrong It become razor thin So what if all you gotta do Is show a little skin Where you're headed down the road To a place you never thought you'd sing Henriette your targets from a mile down the road. You know the long haul drivers get more for carrying their load. Feel right beneath the lights of the lock. Pray you don't have to use your knife. But it wouldn't be the first time that violence was your will. And that's why you left Nebraska. Said it was kill or be killed. Not a law out there has got you running for your life. Henrietta, queen of the highway. Henrietta, queen of the highway. Henrietta, Good stuff there, people. Good stuff. Jay Jeffrey Messerol, live in the KMCN studio. 
uh, actually the Wild Rose Casino Studio. That's what they're calling. That's know, great. They pay for the name. Absolutely. So I got to say that once in a while. Oh, did you mind the stairs? We're 13 stories high up here <laughs> without an elevator. So. It was a long walk. <laughs> You notice you were a little out of breath yeah. there. <laughs> oh, man. That's how I keep in shape. That's good. Sure. That's good. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, you know, Mallory said, you probably don't want to hear this, but you sound a little like, like Randy Travis. Randy Travis, that's incredible. I've never gotten that so one before. That, that's okay. Have I think you ever I, can, been? I can attribute the way my voice sounds, I think, to the amount of fun I had last night. <laughs> kind of fish hollow. And then the two hour yeah. show I had this afternoon already. I'm starting to lose it a little bit. So, uh, <laughs> But if it sounds like Randy Travis, I'll take that all day That's long. That's cool, yeah. Yeah, he's one of my favorites. Is he? Yeah. 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 Well, you know, not that you necessarily sound a lot like him, but your writing kind of reminds me of another. A guy from Wisconsin, Jeffrey Folkall. Oh, man, I love he's, that comparison because he's my all-time favorite. Is he really? Yeah, yeah I wow, love cool. Jeffrey Folkall. Yeah. He's a really nice guy and just an incredible musician and songwriter, too. Hey, if you know him, tell him, hey, come on. Yeah. <laughs> come to West Virginia. <laughs> yeah, oh, I love, I think he's great, too. Yeah, he's, he's phenomenal. Wow. Really good. Yeah, well... Good. There's yeah. two good That's, comparisons yeah, for it's you. It's a good day. This is a good day. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's good news. Um, what did you listen to when you were growing up? Rock, folk, or? Um, it was kind of all over the place. You yeah. know? Um, my mom was a big fan of Jimmy Buffett, so we had a lot of that going on in the house. But um, my dad also listened to a lot of Jim Croce, and I think that that was really kind of the the er first time that I heard a song and realized that it could be you know a pretty interesting story on top of it being music and um jim croce was i think one of the greatest songwriters of all time oh, for sure because he could go from you know time in a bottle and photographs and memories and then in the same breath he could go and play uh roller derby queen or bad bad leroy <laughs> brown and to have you know some yes. of the softest sweetest saddest songs you've ever heard to some of the funnier ones, right. you know, some of that tongue-in-cheek stuff. That, yeah, yeah oh, some yeah. of those more novelty songs too. But I mean, Fantastic. you could tell a story, and he played a great. He was a great guitar player too. And yeah, he had a Maury Mulhaney was the guy that backed him up, and he played acoustic lead. And they were just really, really good. Oh yeah. man, what a what a loss we had when we he passed. Yeah. It was like, oh man. Yeah, I I used to love Jim Croce when yeah. I was growing up. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, good and then stuff. just a lot of that. A lot of that could just uh, the contemporary popular country music of the time too when I was growing up and yeah. there was a stage where I got into hip-hop a little bit too and yeah I, just, I still appreciate the vocal melodies of the hip-hop song and um, yeah and then it's just kind of transferred into more folk and have you ever incorporated any hip-hop into your I have not I mean I certainly wouldn't be able to do it so <laughs> I'd have to bring in a somebody else you know a feature artist or something like that but it would be interesting to do for sure yeah Hey, you know, that's one thing, hip-hop and rap or whatever you want to call it has been around long enough now that you do get a little crossover here and there. And Definitely. People different. It's like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I personally love it when you get crossovers. For together, sure. You know? It's yep. like, wow. I yeah. Know. That's cool. Let's, uh, let's pretend mm -hmm. that you and I are sitting right here. And this is the Bluebird Cafe. Okay. Pick three people, three musicians to join you on stage, dead or alive. It doesn't matter from from mm -hmm. whenever. We're talking doing a songwriters round at the yeah, Bluebird. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, Guy Clark easily. Mm -hmm. He would be my. You know, oh man. Jim Croce would be my first choice. Um, Guy Clark would be the second choice, and then. Um, I would say Jeffrey Folkalt would be the third one. Wow. Yeah. Quite a show there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Wow. Yeah, Jim Croce, I, I have always liked him. Absolutely. And and Jeffrey Folkalt, God, so yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, he's the best. And that well, Guy Clark. What yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That's Guy Clark. Yeah, the guy is legendary <laughs> for a reason. He's just a phenomenal. For sure. Player. Yeah. Oh man. Well, that's that's fantastic. I, I just love that, you know. So, you go from here home. 
Yeah, yep, I'll go home after this one and then back out on the road on so uh, next Thursday. So that's, what, four hours? About three, almost three on the dot from mm-hmm. your front door here to mine. So it's an easy drive, though. Jump on well, yeah, it isn't a bad yeah, drive. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll admit that. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll be happy to be home. So where are you going next Thursday, then? Uh, next, I believe next Thursday is uh, Textile Brewing in Dyersville, Iowa. And then, I mean, I'd have to look at my calendar. I should have been a little more prepared. What do we have? Yeah, Textile Brewing in Dyersville on Thursday. I'll be at Bit Brewery in Central City on Friday the 13th. West Hill Brewing in Indianola on Saturday the 14th. So do you like playing breweries and wineries? Or? Um, I do. You know, you get, I mean, just uh, on a personal note, I, I like to visit them too. You know, I'm a big craft beer fan and, um, you know, it's been wine as well. And um, So I like, you know, from a personal point of view, I just like to, I like to visit them and I like the energy and the vibe that they've got going on most of the time. And you get a lot of, you know, when you go to a, a brewery or a winery, it's a, I feel like it's a different group of people that are going out to pursue those, you right. know, locally sourced kind of things and try all that different stuff. And so they, they seem to be pretty receptive to all kinds of music. And so it's been, it's fun to do. And I would think it's much different than playing a bar. It is, absolutely. Yeah, it's a little more focused on, on the artist, whoever the artist yeah. happens to be. And so that's kind of nice too, where, um, you know, it's got some of, it's got some of the elements of a club show, but, um, right. you know, and so it's still some of the, excitement and looseness of a bar show too from the area have you ever played byron's i've played at byron's once i've seen several shows there yeah. byron is an incredible human being that's cultivated <laughs> just the coolest place and um there's a lot of just top quality musicians that come through there and, and uh get to play and i'll be back there august 20 or august october 24th i think it is it's a sunday it's, yeah second to last sunday in october well, that's, you know, that, that's great that you get to play these uh, breweries and stuff. I would think that would be a, a lot of work because you're one one right after another. You yeah, know? absolutely. Like, do you do any festivals or anything? Um, when I can, yeah. I mean, I'm not I'm not opposed to playing. I'll play anywhere that will have me. But, uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I get an occasional festival, and those are super fun to do. Um, but, yeah, and there's, yeah, it's mostly just kind of one-offs that... I get to do that stuff, but like like Codfish Hollow, I yeah, yeah. I think if of course I have no musical talent, mm-hmm. but if I was a player, I would think that the benefit of sitting down and watching somebody else perform before or after me would be yeah cool. You yeah, know? yeah, that was fun. it was a ton of fun to sit back and just watch those guys work after we were finished because they were all phenomenal. And, the audience is great too because at Codfish Hollow, it's it's way different than you know going to a, a venue in a city where you can you know park in the parking garage across the street or take an Uber and get there. But if you're going to Codfish Hollow, you got to drive on a gravel road for several miles, yep. park in a field, <laughs> and then if you can catch the bus, take a bus down all the way to the barn or have to walk to get down to the barn. So it's like these people are putting in considerable effort to come check these shows out, so you know they're going to be paying attention. And that's yeah, right. that's just it makes for an even better thing when the crowd is that invested. That, that that's a good point. I never really thought of about that. But you do. There's no way to get there without gravels. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You're yeah. On the gravel, it takes man. considerable effort to get there, and <laughs> right. still, you know, there was several hundred there last night, and it was just really, really remarkable. Yeah, they they do a great job out there. Uh, I, I will say that absolutely. Uh, we have to take a break because I just realized <laughs> we have two uh two breaks to take and we haven't taken one yet okay so. <laughs> we'll be right back with more from j jeffrey messerol after these messages I get talking. Yeah, yeah, it'd be hard to, it's hard to stop and go like that, I would think. <laughs> the boss would say, hey, come on, yeah. let's go. We've got to put this in. We've got to put this in.
It's time to celebrate the new Boston expansion to the Morrison Community Hospital for a Fiesta Reed fundraiser out. Thursday, May 12th at Illinois Lodge in Clinton. Yeah. A $50 <laughs> ticket provides <laughs> entry to the event plus a Mexican <laughs> buffet and complimentary wine and beer from five city breweries in the Quad City. Entertainment will be provided by comedian Scott Long. Scott has been seen on NBC, Fox, and the Bob and Tom Show. His latest online dry bar special has a million views. Scott is a top shelf entertainer. Tickets available at Morrison Community Hospital or online. Call Nick at 815 770 255 10 for more information. The weather is brought to you by Renaissance Resale Boutique. We have <coughs> he just, he's, uh, I think, 48. I've been doing this show for 35 years. Sure, just a kid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when he said that, he said, he said when well, you, you started this, the year I was born. Really? Wild Rose Casino Weather Center. Where's Roy at? Yeah. Good sign you've been able to do it for this long. Yeah. Well, I, I drove city bus from the city of okay. This was just a weekend job. Sure. Tuesday and Wednesday, I retired from the upper eighties. Storms both yeah. days. It's still uh, fun to do. Cool. Yeah. Right now, sixty-seven. Mac ninety-four point seven FM, KMCN, Clinton. And we're back with J. Jeffrey Messero live in the KMCN studio on Midwest Review Live, uh, the Wild Rose Casino, KMCN studio. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I got carried away and I, I was looking at the clock, oh wow, still got two breaks to take, so we're going to have to go a little overtime if you don't want That's all right with me, yeah. All right. That's a few more minutes. There you go, people. You can thank me later. <laughs> Extra music. Wow, it's, it's been a lot of fun having you here. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank so, you. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. Do, do, do. You've been traveling. Do you do mostly Iowa or do you go wherever you can? You know, um, pretty much wherever I can. Um, I try not to book too much in the Des Moines metro just because I don't want to get too bogged down there. Right. You know, but I still catch you know, as many shows as I can, or if I can get on it, the Gas Lamp or XPK is an opening act somewhere. Uh, you know, I take those all the time. But um, yeah, I travel mostly through the state of Iowa. Um, I've got some really fun stuff coming up this year where it'll take me. Um, I'm going to go teach a songwriting class at the Ely Folk School in Ely, Minnesota, oh, which cool. is uh, you know six and a half hours north of Des Moines, way up in the north woods of Minnesota. Right. And that'll be really fun. Then I'm going to do a little tour out to uh, North Carolina. It'll be oh, a nice. ten day ten day run with ten straight shows. What's the North Carolina song? King Snake? Is that um well, I've got uh no, the Slingshot the King slingshot. in North Carolina. That's yeah. the one. I forgot about it. I'm gonna have to dust that off for the tour yeah. probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I I remembered North Carolina. Oh, Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's a good, good song. I like Thank that. Thank you. Yeah, that was a fun one to write. <laughs> Yeah, you'll have to perform that out there. Yeah, sure. absolutely. I like that. Absolutely. Yeah, well, that's that's cool that, you know, do you like to be home every night if I, possible? Yeah, if I can, if I can help it, I certainly I certainly will. But, you know, like in this weekend, for instance, to come all the way to Makokota and then to have driven home to come all the way back to Clinton would have been a fool's errand. So I just, you know, <laughs> yeah. crashed. And plus, you know. Tiff put us all up and, you know, was super gracious as a host, too, so um, I wouldn't have passed that up no matter what, but, um, yeah, I, if, if I can, if I can, if it makes sense for me to come back home, I will definitely, I will definitely do it, even yeah. if it's, you know, late, late in the evening, right. um, I do it, it's just, it's so much preferable to wake up in your own bed. Understood, yeah. I totally agree with you there, yeah. man, oh, I sleep so much better in my own bed. Absolutely, yeah. No matter what, you know, I sleep better. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, that's, Tiff, you can't say enough about Tiff and Sean. Yeah. They're so, they're so, they're great people. I mean, mm -hmm. just any way you look at it, they're great. And just huge lovers of music, too. Yes. I mean, they're just dedicated, so dedicated to yeah, making sure. something cool and, and they've, out there. And they've got so many volunteers out there that are the same. Yeah, they love music, Absolutely. and that's why they're there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. there was, you know, 15 or 20 people. I feel like it was just a whirlwind of meeting all these folks when I showed up. And <laughs> they were all yeah, yeah, they sure. were all super excited, and then when our set was over, they were all very, very kind. And um, 
Yeah. It's just a wonderful thing going on out there. Yeah, for sure. Man, I like that place. I really <laughs> do. Did you go on my face? Mallory, are you talking about live on Facebook now? Yes, we're live on Facebook. <laughs> on the Billy Rose page. Not. I don't know why I don't do the Midwest Review page live. But, yeah, it's just habit, I guess. <laughs> anyway, um, I think that's what she's asking. Good stuff. There. That'll, that'll <laughs> appease her. <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> <for a minute. laughs> anyway, uh, you want to do another song or you yeah we, absolutely we yeah i'll play uh i'll play a new song i've got called small engine repair um oh this is uh this is a new one that i wrote about september of last year october of last year um i've got a music video that'll hopefully be out here in the next week or so for this song as well uh, working with uh my friend sam uh Mataglia to make this one and uh, it's a really fun video um and it's uh, my favorite song i've written so far so I, I've enjoyable. played this one. Before. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. It's good stuff. And this was uh, I had found myself in a drive-through line up in Ely, Minnesota, when I was there for a wedding um, last September, and I was behind this beat-up old truck driven by this beat-up old man, and had a bumper sticker on it that said, "If you're against logging, you should try wiping with plastic toilet paper." <laughs> and I was immediately taken by uh, you know somebody that would put a bumper sticker like that on their car, but. <laughs> Since we were stuck in a drive through queue, I didn't have an opportunity to talk to him or anything. So I kind of made up a little story about how he ended up being in the Northwoods. And it ended up being this song here called Small Engine Repair. Cool. J. Jeffrey Messero live in the KMCN studio on Midwest Review Live. <laughs> Small engine repair ain't much, but it's work. The beats pushing papers all day. I couldn't work for the man, hell, I never paid taxes like that says it all pays the same. Charged by the hour, it's cash under the table, and that's if I even get paid. I'll often trade off all of my parts and labor for favors and something fresh paid. Carved me a home out of this old motel room It's cheaper if you rent by the month When my shop closes I fix what gets broken So they don't charge me as much As an Indian fella I guess him Ojibwe Keeps a unit there right next to mine Speaks fondly of his family A new job in timber How's it better than crawling out of the mine White Iron Lake, that's a straight line from my place, and I fished there when the fishing was good. No, it's lousy with carp and my hands with arthritis, so I can't tie them knots like you should. And my doctor, he tells me my blood pressure's rising, I'm propped up on the and grill. But my daily walks around this lake and changing diet don't work, and the medicine will. South of 18, I fixed a nickel on a burglary charge. I was tried as an adult, but I practically walked with parole since I went in and on. As I grew older, I had to open my own shop, because good work was so hard to get. So 
Seems that having any kind of criminal record's worse than being in the Vietnam. Repair ain't much, but it's work. The beats pushing papers all day. Couldn't work for the man, hell, I've never paid taxes like that says it all pays the same. I charge by the hour, it's cash under the table, and that's if I even get paid. So I'll sit at this workbench and turn on these wrenches till I find myself in the grave. That's good stuff. Good stuff, people. Oh, I love that. Thank you. I, when I listened to that song, I thought, wow. So you just made that up. Yeah, none of that is true wow. for, <laughs> for anyone specifically. It's just a combination of all of the details that I mostly captured while I was up around Ely. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like that a lot. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun having you here. Yeah, thank you um, so much for having me. You get over to this side a whole lot or much? Or um, you know, this Dyersville. this year, yeah, in Dyersville. This year, I've got more um, than I ever have in the in the eastern half of the state. Um, I spent so much time in uh, Cherokee that you know it got to be where it would be five, six, seven hour drives to get to some of these places. And, um, so I didn't pursue it much, uh, and I was spending a lot more time in Minnesota and South Dakota and Nebraska stuff like that. But um, yeah, now that we're in Des Moines and we're that much closer. I've got a lot more going on in the eastern side of the state. Yeah, yeah that's, well, that's cool. I'll be in Bettendorf as well. And, yeah. Crawford? Uh, Crawford no, Crew? no. It's, uh, is that what it is? I don't, I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. That's terrible. No, I booked, don't. I booked something like 120 shows so far, so I, I've lost track of all of them. You don't remember, but I've been trying to remember. Twin Span Brewing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. When I don't remember, but I'll See, be a twin span. Now, you, you came up with it. Since you've been on here, yeah. I've been trying to think who told me this, but I still haven't come up with a name. <laughs> so I'm going to say it anyway. Yeah. They told me, just give him some baked beans and he'll be your friend. <laughs> so what's that about? Uh, as a joke, several years ago, um, a friend suggested, after listening to me describe a dish of baked beans that I have, they jokingly said that I should uh, start a blog for it. And so I did. <laughs> for baked beans? For baked beans. And so I did. <laughs> and if you go to my website, which is jjeffreymessroll.com, there's a whole page dedicated to the baked bean blog, and you can go on there and see you know, the various places that I've stopped. and. I get to travel enough that it gives me, you know, an opportunity to find a lot of new restaurants, and I'm a big barbecue person too. So, okay. get, you know, it's I've used well, that barbecue now. and baked yeah. beans. They yep. go together. Absolutely. So I've used that now as an excuse to get as much barbecue as I can <laughs> when I'm out on the road. And well, it's uh, honey, I have to do it. Yeah, it's for work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a silly thing, but it's you know, it's something to. That, I think that's great. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of fun. I should come up with some. Hmm. Absolutely. What can I come up to that my wife would agree with? Absolutely. I have to think of something. Absolutely. <laughs> that, that's great. I See, I still can't remember who it was that told me that. Sure. Just that's very funny. If you think of it, you'll have to let me know. And he'll be your friend. That's, <laughs> <I don't think. laughs> that, that's why I, I've been sitting here the whole time thinking, yeah. oh, it'll come to me. That's but excellent. it hasn't come yeah. to me. Yeah. I'm a pretty simple man <laughs> with simple pleasures. <laughs> Well, that's, I love that. I love that story. <laughs> the Big Bean blog. That's right. I'll have to check that out. Absolutely. JJeffreyMesserole.com. 
And is that where you can get your music? Or? Yeah, yep, you can, um, you know, all the all the concert dates are going to be posted on there as well. And there's, um, yeah, links to uh, merchandise shops and, you know, places to buy uh, records as well. And um, I shouldn't say records as in vinyl records, but to buy the CDs. And right. People are still doing that. But then it's all also out on uh, anywhere you stream music, it's all out there too. Have you released anything on vinyl? Or? I haven't. I'm hopeful that um, this next collection of songs I feel like is the best stuff I've written in 15 years now. So um, I'm going to try and do probably do a Kickstarter this time so that I can get some money to really spend some time in a studio and uh, make it make it real nice. And we'll get some vinyl on top of that and some other merchandise and stuff. But Vinyl's expensive. It it's is. It's very expensive. The biggest to do. problem. Yeah, yeah. And I just don't, I don't move enough units to make it, you know, financially viable to buy them at this point in time. But if I had a little extra investment money, I sure would be doing it. I can't believe you don't use, move enough units. <laughs> what? I love your stuff. Yeah. I really do. Thank and, you. And I have people comment, you know, all the time, oh, I, I like that guy a lot. That's great. You know, Pat is probably, Pat is probably hiking right now, <laughs> and he's probably listening on his headphones. And he's saying, yeah, I like that guy. Excellent. Because he's mentioned you before. Okay. You and Otis Gibbs. Yeah. Who, yep. He loves Otis. you and Otis Gibbs. There was one other one. I can't, I can't remember. Mace Hathaway, maybe? Oh, yeah. Mace is cool. So, yeah. Yeah. That's oh, great. Those. So that, that's what the company he puts you in. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> wow. Our time is almost done. But... We got time for another song if you want to do one. Sure, yeah, I can play another song. Okay, yeah, you bet. So we'll hear one more song, then I'll do the final break as we leave. So <laughs> I'm getting it in, I promise you. All right, Jay Jeffrey right. Messerol, live in the wild Rose Casino and Hotel studio on KMCN on Midwest Review Live. Here's a song called Buckskin Jacket. It's a Friday night And I'm out of in vain Under the bleachers At a high school football game Must have missed the big play Cause you can hear that pep band go Well come it's come on late this year These fools are playing in the snow But I've got my buckskin jacket well, it's a hand-me-down from my uncle, cause he had it. Well, turquoise and white fringe will down the sleeve. This coat feels like a Friday night to me. Well, Creole Leon picked me up in his green Mustang. Turbo net riding shotgun, he desperately wants to get in the bag. But the back seat smells like dope, and I can tell his old lady stone. We're heading to a party at the water tower, that's where us sterlicks call home. But I've got my buckskin jacket. Well, it's a hand me down from my uncle. He had it Turquoise and white fringe down the sleeve This coat feels like a Friday night to me Kids from cross town drove over in their jacked up trucks. A nice box full of fall staff and just a chillin' on beach nut plugs. They 
you're spitting in the empty You gotta be careful what you drink I like my drunk Uncle Monty That fool he chug anything But I've got his buckskin jacket it's a hand-me-down from old Monty Cause he had it well, Turquoise and white fringe without the sleeve This coat feels like a Friday night to me Yes, I've got his buckskin jacket well, It's a hand-me-down from my uncle he had it well, turquoise and white fringe without the sleeve this coat feels like a Friday night to me this coat feels like a Friday night to me <laughs> yes sir J. Jeffrey Messerol, live in the KMCN studio. That's good stuff, people. That's good stuff. Yeah. Thank you so much. Fantastic, man. Appreciate that. Really appreciate you coming by. My pleasure. Thank you. And for I, I'm me. glad this trip turned out to be a good one. For yeah, you. it was a wonderful, wonderful time out here in Eastern yeah. Iowa this morning. That means you'll come back. Right? Anytime, yeah, right. absolutely. And if you talk to J. to Jeffrey Folkall, Sure. Yeah, I'm not that. I'm not that connected with him. But if I ever, if I ever cross paths with him, I'll... do you know um, uh, Dave Huckfeld? I know of him. Yeah, okay. and I believe he's originally from Spencer too, which is just south of where I grew up too. But um, yeah, he's another great songwriter from the yeah. state. I was trying to get him to come here. They're playing codfish. Him and Eric Koskinen. And yeah, Eric Kata Koskinen Brown. rules, man. He's one he's of my favorites great too. too. Yeah. <laughs> He's really and uh, just a really nice guy, but killer guitar player, and he's got a real interesting way of um, singing too. He's got a real laid back style that's really cool. And yeah, I I really like his stuff too. Yeah, yeah, that'll they're be a all going to be at Codfish Hollow. I'm not sure exact date, end of this month, I think. Sure, but uh, yeah, I was trying to get them to come in. But yeah, they haven't uh, said the yes or no. Sure. <laughs> well, you know, who knows? That that's the problem is. It's on a Sunday, and if they're not in the area, you know, it's hard yeah. to get anybody to drive here on a Sunday and then go for back sure. home. For sure, for sure, yeah. Although, was it last week? Or? Yeah, I think it was last week. I had a, a gal come in, and she, she, uh, Sword. Brittany Sword. Brittany Sword, yeah. Yeah, she was here, and... Yeah, she drove in just for the show and then drove back home. Very cool. That's a pretty good drive for her. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, well, thank you very much for doing that. Yeah, I have yet to meet her, but I feel like we're chasing each other around. There was a KBOE out of Oskaloosa. They have a little radio program. Oh, yeah. And she'd done it ahead of me, too. And, um, yeah, we're kind of chasing each other around, but she's Yeah, yeah she's, she's got a brand-new EP out. Yeah. There, so, that, yeah, she was pushing that, so. Yeah, well, that's good. Well, thank you again, and yeah, they can pleasure. pick up your downloads anywhere. Or? Yeah, I mean, any 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 place you can stream music, you can you can find my stuff. But you go to the website jjeffreymesterol dot com, and you can pick up physical copies and get downloads and stuff like that. Yeah, if you wanted to support it. All right. Well, good. Thank you again. Yeah. And that's going to do it for me, people. I know. I know. Uh, uh, Joel said, "Hey, great show tonight." Why don't you do another hour? <laughs> First of all, Jay has to, or JJ. See, I'm going to call you JJ because that's, right. that's that what works. that's what you were trying to do. That's right. I'm going to call him JJ. JJ was trying to uh, get home tonight, you know, so <laughs> we got to go. I'll be back next week, same time. Well, not exactly same time, but four to six next week. And I hope you join me again then. Until then, don't forget to reuse, repurpose, reduce, recycle. I love each and every one of you. See you next week.
Friday, May 6th from one right. to 1. The arrest and reversal of cardiovascular diseases with nutrition, fact or fiction, will be presented by Dr. Caldwell B. Esselstein, Jr., a former okay. internationally that, renowned uh, surgeon, researcher, and clinician at the Cleveland Clinic. The program is hosted on Zoom. Visit cghmc.com slash S-E-E-S-S-Y or call 815-625-0400, extension 5716. Hi, it's Sarah at Classic Body Works, Clinton's go-to full-service yeah. auto body shop. How much I We've got been family-owned and operated for oh, 40 sure. years. This, this darn thing shuts off. Oh, yeah. Can repair all makes of People keep telling me, well, there's got to be a way to, to set it. Not only restore you yeah. the air, but we also restore your consumer. Stop in today for a free collision estimate or call to schedule a wheel alignment for oil change. Oh. That was great. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta go, people. Sorry. I'm gonna shut you down here. Don't forget, next week, he won't be here, but I will. I know.